Hurricane Katrina, Ike, Harvey, and now Irma, some of the most powerful hurricanes to hit the US in recent decades all have something in common. They've made landfall within weeks of each other and have hit the same areas along the Gulf of Mexico. So what causes this familiar pattern? The main development region of the Atlantic spanning the West African coast to the Gulf of Mexico is where hurricanes tend to form. While scientists can't quite predict the location, timing or strength of hurricanes that'll make landfall more than a few days out, they do know the key ingredients that go into building strong storms. Without all these factors, they're unlikely to form. First, warm ocean water, a hurricane's primary fuel source. The Atlantic hurricane season spans from early June to late November, but it takes a while for the oceans to warm up. So most hurricanes occur in August and September. To be able to, to really develop a storm to hurricane strength, so you really need to have increasing evaporation of water from the ocean surface from very warm waters to provide energy to the storm. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, ocean temperatures have been warmer than usual this summer. Second, moisture in the air. Dry air and dust prevent hurricanes from forming because it weakens thunderstorms, which act as the building blocks of hurricanes. Thunderstorms help concentrate the in-up and out circulation that makes a hurricane a hurricane. When you have thunderstorms, there's typically inflow into those thunderstorms at near the surface, and then the air rises within the thunderstorms and then spreads out at upper levels. And sort of like the ice skater who starts spinning with the arms out and then pulls them in and spins up. As that air comes from larger distances from the thunderstorms and into the central area of thunderstorms, the, the overall rotation of that flow will increase. Third, low levels of vertical wind shear. If the winds sweeping hurricanes across the ocean push their lowest part more slowly than their top or in opposite directions, the winds will shear or tear the storm apart. This year, there has been less wind shear to break up the storms. Some of the easterly winds pushing storms towards the Caribbean, Mexico and the US have also been weaker this season. That's made storms linger over the Atlantic longer, giving them more time to feed off the moisture-rich air and warmer waters. Fourth, waves in the air currents. Heating over the Sahara and monsoon-related moisture help to create waves which tend to peak around August and September due to higher temperatures. As the waves move over the Atlantic, warm waters feed them and they intensify. These V-shaped kinks in wind currents deepen, helping to cluster thunderstorms. Air pressure begins to fall and winds spin faster. This summer, hurricane forming conditions have been so favorable that scientists expect a season with above normal activity. Already, we've had six storms with winds faster than 39 miles per hour, including the devastating Hurricane Harvey. In early September, there were three strong storms whipping through the Atlantic and the Gulf, Jose, Katia and Irma, which has clocked winds as high as 185 miles per hour. And peak hurricane season isn't over yet. Scientists expect five to nine more possible hurricanes this season, according to NOAA, for a total of 14 to 19 for the year. Between 1981 and 2010, there are an average of about 12 named storms each season, including six hurricanes. In 2005, the same year Katrina struck New Orleans, there were more than two dozen tropical storms in the Atlantic Basin.